Thank you. God bless all of you. It is good to see a couple of you on the screen, but if you can go on the video side, at least I can see your face. If you have an access to the computer, oh. if you can go to the video, I can see your face. I see, right now I see six of you. It will be nice to see your faces. I want to thank all of you for joining us. This is a beautiful time of prayer, fellowship, and intercession. It is lovely to have believers from all around to join us from California, from Los Angeles, California, my wife, Shalini and I, we send you our greetings and our prayers. Pastor Stevenson is a dear friend of ours. We want to say, take this moment to thank him and the India Christian Assembly for inviting us to join you in fellowship. And we have been in touch with several other groups and churches via video, even though we cannot travel. It is an opportunity for believers to share the word, share the word and burden, and also pray for one another. I am given around 30 minutes tonight, so I do want to touch on uh, the present day events and our response to the current problems that we are going through. We have doctors and experts and media people giving us different uh, opinions and even giving us suggestions as to what to do, as to how to face this pestilence, this pandemic. But as we are God's believers, we have one thing better. That is the word of the Lord. God's word is there to help us. Secondly, we have the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit assured to us that he will be there to lead us and guide us. So for tonight's uh, meditation, I would like for you to turn your Bibles to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, starting with verse 6 to 8. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, verses, starting from verse 6. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. One more time. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. And also, you will see troubled time. For all these things must come to pass. But this is not the end yet. Verse 7. For nation will rise up against the nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places. Right now, here we are here in America and around the world, we are going through a time of pestilence. We call it pandemic. Verse 8, we are reminded that all these are the beginning of sorrows. Believers, this is just the beginning. But we do need the help and the presence of the Holy Spirit uh, to guide us through this so that we can be prepared for the coming of the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ was encouraging his own disciples just before his ascension to heaven. He was telling the end times, these are the things that you can expect to happen. If you read, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, he gives you a list of things, of signs uh, to, uh, to watch and, to, and to, to wait to see come to fulfillment. Christ has already forewarned us. 
And so we as believers, Bible believing believers, we are not ignorant about the end times. Some people think that we are going to be here forever. No, friends, we are not. <laughs> you know, this year I completed 74 years of life. This is the, my 75th year. I have seen several things during my lifespan, several. In fact, a few years ago, I had a, a mini stroke. Now I had to use some of my notes to speak to you. Otherwise, I would just go on speaking to you. These are some of the limitations we experience when we are in this frail body. But this is the assurance for all believers that even though we leave this body, we will be with the master and we will be in his presence. In the meanwhile, if you are going to be here a little longer and Christ is coming, we all will be caught up in the presence of the Lord in the twinkling of an eye. That is the assurance of the believers. Amen? Praise Amen. the Lord. Christ is telling his disciples that in the last days, there will be perilous times, difficult times, pestilence, earthquakes, and famines. And we are experiencing that. 2,000 years ago, when he mentioned that, he was talking about the future. Those future, future things that Christ was talking about, we are experiencing it during our lifetime. That means the present. It is present for us. Christ has already forewarned about this to all of us believers. So as believers, what is our response? The world will look at all these things. They are alarmed. They are agitated. They are anxious. And they are afraid. Four A's. They are alarmed. They are agitated. They are anxious. And they are afraid. But how about you, believers? How about you? How are you? How are you responding to the day-to-day -day events which is beyond our control? How are you responding to this? I am suggesting from the word of God three things that we believers we need to do. First of all, don't blame God for it. Don't blame Satan. Don't blame your neighbor. These are all in the permissive will of the Lord. The Lord God knows that these things should happen. And so this is happening according to the knowledge of the, of the Lord. So for us to be strong and stable, we need to accept the word of the Lord. God's word gives us strength gives us direction, and God's word will guide us. First of all, in this time of uh, pestilence and difficulties, we all need to accept the word of God, which is the Bible. Accepting the word of God means reading his word, listening to his word, and believing his word. Secondly, as believers in the Lord, we need to lean on the promise of our Lord. Accept the assurance of the promise of God, which Christ said, I will never leave you. When we are going through these difficulties, please remember, you are not alone. Looking at these pictures, I see many of your face. You are all together. We are connected in faith and also electronically. Isn't that wonderful? You are not alone. Christ said, I will not leave you. So we have the abiding presence of Christ to help us in times of need. So accept the abiding presence of Christ. First of all, accept the word of the Lord as it is. Secondly, accept the abiding presence of Christ. <coughs> And third, and third, 
anticipate the coming of the Lord. Anticipate the coming of the Lord. Yes, most of us, we came from Kerala and other places, came to have a good future for us and for our children. The Lord sent some of us servants of the Lord to serve among you in our own communities. Thank God for all of that. But one thing which binds all of us together as believers is this. Even though whether you are in India, Kerala, or in Persian Gulf, or in America, one thing that we are all believers looking forward to is the coming of the Lord. That should be the, the motivation that I have, or you have, that these sufferings on the face of the earth, especially through this coronavirus right now, we are experiencing it. It is not going to last forever. It's only a phase. But there are more things coming on its way. We need to be prepared for that. I was so blessed by listening to all of you praying for various needs, not only for your local needs, but also the needs of others, those who are in the community, those who are overseas. And I thank the Lord for that. And we believers, we have a big responsibility to intercede for people who are in need of the grace of God. People, those who need the salvation through Jesus Christ. People, those who have not yet saved, are not yet saved, not yet received the Lord Jesus Christ. They need our prayer support. And we have a big obligation to do that. <coughs> Here in California, we have a pastor. Some of you may be familiar with his name. His name is Pastor David Jeremiah. He lives around 200 miles south of us in the city of San Diego. We live in Los Angeles. He is in San Diego. He comes on the TV. He is a teacher of prophecy. Pastor Jeremiah summed up the 21st century people in three words. Three words. 21st century people. This includes believers too, according to him. He says, people are stubborn, they are selfish, and sensual. People are stubborn, selfish, and sensual. Pastor David Jeremiah. And he was telling, any amount of preaching, any amount of teaching, any amount of education, will not change them. According to him, the only one who can change the present corrupt generation is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the answer to the present stubbornness, selfishness, and sensuality of the 21st century. So friends, believers, we need to present Jesus to others. That's our responsibility. Even wearing your mask, they may not see your face, but still they will hear comforting words from you. Yes, they want to hear comforting words. People are looking to others to hear a soft, smooth, kind, forgiving words. And who is fit to give that? You and I, God's children. We need to share the gospel of Christ with those people. <coughs> Amen? Thank you for responding. That is good. It is always comforting to lean on to Jesus. We have no one else to lean on to. So let's depend on Jesus our Lord, and who is the savior and the, the master of our destiny and our life. 
Now, in connection with Pastor Jeremiah mentioned, I want to invite your, your attention to 2 Timothy chapter 3. This is only a description of the present day generation. I do not have time to explain that, but if you have your Bible, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, the first six verses. 2,000 years ago, while the Apostle Paul was writing to his young disciple Timothy, he was warning them about the future generation. And in fact, I see that future generation he is warning is applicable to us today here in America and elsewhere. Apostle is warning, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. For know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. We are in the midst of it, friends. For people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bosters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving slanderish, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure than the lovers of God. Even in the church, verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power of God. Doesn't this describe our present condition? Pastor Jeremiah is very true when he is assessing the whole of the humankind today. We are indeed selfish. Yes. Sensual. Yes. But who can help us to get out of this? Only the power of God. Humans try to help and solve our problems. But the old, only God can do this. I was going through the history of the 21st century. In fact, 1919 to 2019, I made a small list of things, human effort to bring peace and comfort to this world. All of that ended up in failure. President Woodrow Wilson, an American president. Soon after the First World War, First World War was 1914 to 1918, gathered together 63 nations and formed a group of peaceful nations, peace-loving nations. He called it the League of Nations. 63 nations under the leadership of Woodrow Wilson 1919 till 1939, it lasted only 20 years. In 1939, Second World War started. Terrible time, Second World War. After Hitler, he came, and he came to power. So from 1939 to 1945 was the Second World War. And to stop any more wars, then the world leaders got together and they negotiated and formed a society known as the United Nations. We are familiar with that. But were they able to stop wars? Of course not. The Korean War, the Vietnam War, Gulf War, Afghan War, Iran, Iraq War, all this happened in spite of this United Nations. So human efforts to stop wars and calamities, that has not happened. But we do need to depend on the Prince of Peace, who is Jesus Christ, who is able to bring peace to this nation. Amen? This nation, this nation, Jesus our Prince, and only by accepting his lordship 
his guidance, we can experience peace. My dear friends, this is, these are perilous times. These are difficult times. And one sign our Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples was this. The end will come when the gospel is preached around the world. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 14. End will come when the gospel is preached around the world. The gospel has not reached around the world, even though we have access to computers, we have uh, electronic access, we have, uh, thank God that almost every home is nowadays is a broadcasting center. Before that, we had to depend on radio stations and TV stations. Now, everyone is almost broadcasting. But we do need to use this opportunity to share the gospel. Even today, there are people around the world without the gospel. Gospel needs to be taught. I remember 50 years ago, going to Congo, middle of Africa, sharing the gospel of Christ. To a bunch of people not wearing clothes. The pygmies, they did not wear clothes 50 years ago. But today, because someone took the gospel to those people in Central Africa, they wear cloth, they have a Bible in their language, they send their children to school, and thank God that they have Jesus Christ as the Savior. People go like that around the world, we need to pray for them so that the gospel can be taken to these places. So what did I say? I'm just about to conclude now. The last 30 minutes, all what we need is Jesus during this time of crisis. Please don't forget to wear your mask when you go out. That is for your protection and others' protection. But the only true protection that we can receive is Jesus Christ for our body and for our souls and for the salvation of our loved ones. So three things to remember. Accept the word of the Lord as it is. Receive the assurance of the promise of Christ that I will never leave you. Third, great anticipation. Wait for the coming of the Lord. Prepare ourselves and prepare others for the glory of the Lord. I believe that most of you are believers. There may be others who may be listening to us who have not yet given a commitment to, of their life to Christ. If that's you, I'm going to take a moment to pray for you. Lord Jesus, we bring our loved ones, those who are the hearers of this word, tonight you speak to them. Tonight you speak to them. And if you are listening to me, if you have never committed your life to Christ, pray with me. Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. Forgive my sins. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my savior. Come into my heart and fill my heart with joy. And Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit so that, so that I can be bold, so that I can be waiting for the coming of the Lord. Bless your people, we pray, in Jesus Christ and for your glory. Amen. God bless all of you.